We stalk one of Australia's most beautiful birds. A prized cage bird, the Gouldian finch has been pushed close to extinction in the wild. Field ecologist Joe Heathcote cunningly lures them with mating calls on her MP3 player. So once we've opened the net, uh, we come back so that they can't see us. Um, and I've turned the playback on, so normally the Gouldians will come in and respond to the playback. Here they're coming down to the dirt, so sometimes you have to flush them into the net. Mm. And how long have you had to wait until... Uh, I've had to wait hours before. Yeah. Usually he is very good though. Do you have to be pretty quick to get them out once they go in? Yeah, because mm. they can overheat. Because mm. they'd panic, wouldn't they? Yeah, they're a little confused, I think, when they go in the net, so yeah. they just seem to, to lie there, they'll flap a little. Mm. Yeah. Joe and Dr. Steve Murphy run the remnant finches through some basic checkups to see how they're faring. So, Steve, what's really the limiting factor? Is it the number of nest holes or the amount of seed that they can find during the wet season? It seems to be a combination of both. They're compelled to nest in tree hollows, which ties them to particular areas, and then that critical food is spinifex, and as that gets rarer in the landscape, mm. They're sort of forced to make one of two decisions. They can either try and commute from the nest hollow out to the spinifex to feed, uh, and in doing so they'll exhaust themselves, or they just decide not to breed. But either way, the population's just going to go down. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so here we have a female Gouldian. I love the mauve, and then the mauve mm. bleeding into the yellow. Mm. So the process is, first I band them with this little metal band, and yep. it's got an individual number, yep. and then I bleed them. I find the vein under the wing and with a needle. So I'm like a vampire at this stage. Mm. Poor little bugger. Mm. But they're all right. In the areas where cattle has been removed, the Gouldian stands a better chance of fighting back. It does because yes. cattle do preferentially graze um, some grass species which they find tasty. Yeah. What you're doing here is monitoring how your burning's going, in a sense. Yes, and grazing. And grazing. So when we destock. Yeah. yeah. So you can tell by the condition of the birds whether all your other management's really working. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah they're an extremely good indicator of that, actually. Yeah. The real key to maintaining biodiversity in the north is to try and break up those those impacts that are happening yeah. on landscape scale. So to try and break it up, make things patchy, make sure we've got some old spin effects left in the system, yeah. make sure that not all areas are grazed and particularly sensitive areas are, are not grazed. So oh. um, I think that's the key to making sure that you know, pastoralists are, you know, can go on doing what they do and, and the plants and animals have somewhere to live as well. Yeah. So those two are ready to go. They're pretty quick actually once they see the light. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was quick. That's <laughs> <It was> great. <laughs> All this work takes place on what was once a three and a half thousand square kilometre cattle station. Head of the Wildlife Conservancy is Atticus Fleming. Five or six years ago, you, you would have seen a few head of cattle down there in the valley. Yep. But, you know, I